My name is Commissioner Frank Avila, and I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And today, the name of our show is Youth, the Ultimate Renewable Resource. And I have as my guest, Garth Katner, Ph.D. He's the original director of Roots and Shoot Great Lakes, and it's part of the Jane Goodall Institute. And uh, Gart, is, we're all going to talk about why youth is so important to save the planet. Thank you for being on our show, Gart. Thank you very much. You know, Gart, uh, Roots and Shoot, Jane Goodall, uh, uh, she's very famous on, on what she did in Africa, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and uh, with, with what, with the monkeys or the apes? Chimpanzees. Uh, chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and she lived with them. Mm -hmm. But then I, I guess uh, she had some type of an affair at her home. And she probably had some youth there, and, mm -hmm. and probably that's how it got started, right? Mm -hmm. uh, roots and Shoots. Mm -hmm. Explain, what is Roots and Shoots? Well, Roots and Shoots is the Youth Service Learning and Leadership Program of the Jane Goodall Institute. It's an international organization with over 8,000 groups around the world. And uh, probably... 8,000? 8,000 8, Roots oh. and Shoots groups. And these Roots and Shoots groups uh, are young people with an adult advisor, uh, any age group, uh, typically starting at five and going all the way up through university, and they do service projects on a regular basis uh, that focus on animals, human beings, and the environment. Animals, human beings, and the environment. That's correct. Yeah. And it got started in Africa when a group of young people in a village right near where Dr. Jane was doing her work uh, wanted to improve the life of their community. And they came to her for ideas, and she basically said, you've got all the ideas you need. You go for it. <laughs> and from that, they actually inspired Jane to start talking about the uh, whole idea of roots and shoots, which are youth, are the roots. And uh, if you're a gardener or you've seen, uh, you know, even sometimes our highway system with uh, trees and whatnot, yes. the hardest substance can't withstand uh, the work of roots and that's the young people, and obviously the shoots are what make uh, the world a better place. And, and the roots, if you water mm -hmm. the roots mm -hmm. and, and provide uh, uh, ingredients for, to make it to grow, fertilizer, uh, water, then it'll shoot straight up. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And, and you know, you, you mentioned that they started because they wanted to prove their community. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was growing up, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I thought that my community was, and my neighbor was right next door to me mm -hmm. when I was growing up. But now in 2008, mm -hmm. our community is the whole world. That's right. That's because right. Wh whatever we do in one area of the planet will have an effect on another part of the planet. That's correct. And, 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 and so is this how Roots and Shoot think that our community is a whole planet now? Well, I think one thing that makes Roots and Shoots uh, unique, especially here in the Midwest, uh, is the fact that not only are young people doing projects to clean up uh, their neighborhoods or to preserve the purity of their drinking water or working with uh, homeless or people less fortunate than themselves, but they're part of an international network that is doing the same thing in Africa, in Asia, Latin America. And what we seem to see is that while each problem in each community is a little bit different, what unites us all is exactly what you said. So we try to make sure that these groups are in communication with one another so they can be both inspired and learn from 
each other. Now, you're the original director of the Midwest. That's correct. It's called uh, Roots and Shoots Great Lakes Region. And now, um, uh, Roots and Shoots, what are they doing for the youth here in the Chicagoland area? Well, here in Chicago, we have uh, our base office, our regional office. Okay. <coughs> and and, and regional, you cover five states? Six states. Uh, six states. We are the largest region in the country. Oh. Uh, both in terms of land area and population, yeah. uh, and we span two time zones, unlike all the other regions. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we didn't realize that until we had to start having meetings over the phone and yeah. uh, over the internet. Uh, but we basically include everything from Minnesota down around the Great Lakes to Ohio. So Minnesota, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio. Ohio. Five states. Though. Five states. Yeah. And in three of those states, yeah. we have volunteer state coordinators that help the local Roots and Shoots groups get information, uh, plan their activities, celebrate their activities, build visibility for their service projects, and what have you. Here in Chicago, we have uh, the Great Lakes Youth Leadership Council. And I think another aspect of Roots and Shoots Great Lakes, well, of Roots and Shoots International, is that we really take seriously this idea that youth, being the ultimate renewable resource, are the ones who drive the program. Well, that's true. You know, our opening song mm -hmm. that we have where um, the kids are going to save the planet. That's right. And and because uh, the way um, every time I read the paper, mm -hmm. global warming, mm -hmm. climate change, mm -hmm. uh, drought, mm -hmm. uh, 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 in other parts of the uh, country, we have this type of problem. Uh, mm -hmm. But here in the Great Lakes, we're living in God's country mm -hmm. because we have what? We have the Great Lakes. That's right. Yeah, uh, and God's country, we have good soil for farming. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what more does one need? Uh, water, food, yeah. Good shelter. Yeah, yeah good shelter. And, and that's why we have to protect mm -hmm. what we have here in the Great Lakes. Exactly, and I think it's also re it's important to remember that the Great Lakes is its own unique environmental niche yes. or ecological niche. And not only are we humans residents, but wildlife, uh, domesticated animals as well. And a lot of the projects that Roots and Shoots groups do around the Great Lakes region are often with local anti-cruelty society, uh, local zoos such as the Lincoln Park Zoo mm -hmm. or uh, over in Ohio the Toledo Zoo. Um, they often bring together the three ideas of environment, human beings, and animals by becoming docents, volunteer docents, uh, working with younger children to become aware of the wonderful animal life that you know makes our mm -hmm. region unique. Now uh, here in Chicago in the Great Lake region, how many groups do you have? We have approximately 30 here in the uh, kind of greater Chicagoland area. Greater Chicago? And about uh, 70, I believe, in the uh, state of Illinois. Okay, so 30, and you cover uh, uh, five counties. We got Cook County, mm -hmm. DuPage, Lake, so, mm -hmm. so they're all throughout the several counties throughout the Chicagoland area. That is correct. That yeah. is correct. That, that's uh, excellent. And, and then do they meet, uh, or each group, um, they meet once a week, once a month, or, w or whenever a project's coming on, or, or, or they just go out and do a project? <coughs> Excuse me. A third aspect that I think that makes Roots and Shoots very unique is that each group in itself is unique. Uh, many are based at schools. Many are based with family groups or neighborhoods or boys and girls clubs. Yeah. So um, they're required to do at least three to four youth service learning projects a year. How many times they have to meet is really up to them. Up to them. Some are very, very active. We have one group uh, at the Dewey School up in Evanston uh, that meets once a week because it's based in the elementary school mm -hmm. itself. We have others that get together once every couple weeks because they do volunteer work uh, at a particular shelter or a food pantry. Well, you, you mentioned that uh, uh, your mission is for um, uh, taking care of animals, human, and the environment. What do they do for each one of the, like for an animal, for a human being, and for the environment? What, what, does, uh, what are they doing for them? Well, every project has to have three components. Okay. Uh, it has to be based in knowledge. So the group will typically, let's say they want to do something for animals. Okay. Um, they go out and they make a survey of their community. Perhaps they find out that there are too many stray dogs and cats in the neighborhood. Yeah. So they then go to the Anti-Cruelty Society, 
uh, here in Chicago, for example, and they discuss ways that they can help the anti-cruelty society deal with this issue of stray animals. Yeah. And then the whole point of this knowledge plus action is that it creates compassion. Compassion not only for themselves, their neighbors, their families, but for the wider world. And the wider world is represented by the great activities they've done to help stray animals. That's just one example. Yeah. And then for a human being? For a human being, uh, we have groups right now in Ohio that work with, uh, what is it called now? It's Cohio. It is the Coalition on the Homeless uh, yeah. of Ohio. And we have three groups right now in the uh, Toledo area that are working as an after-school program for homeless high school students. And, you know, and, and I think that's a big problem nowadays. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as I mentioned, every time you pick up the paper, you see, uh, uh, and uh, I, I mentioned climate change, mm -hmm. uh, global warming, mm -hmm. uh, drought. But I forgot to mention on the foreclosures mm -hmm. on a lot of the homes. Mm -hmm. And so you might be seeing a lot of more homeless people out there mm -hmm. that because uh, they foreclose on their home and they have to go someplace. Right. See? Right. And, and so it, it's a big uh, topic nowadays on, on this, this type of foreclosure. And I think what you find is that especially with homeless uh, young people in the high school yes. age bracket, that they tend to move from school to school. And what we're trying to do is an experiment in this uh, three-county area around Toledo, Ohio, to create a program that they can actually take with them. So if they're one school for a couple of weeks but then have to move on to another school, there is going to be a Roots and Shoots program that will embrace them. They will take them in and they... And, you know, not also for, <coughs> as you mentioned, homeless also, uh, you have a lot of people without food, mm -hmm. so uh, you have food pantry mm -hmm. that uh, that are starting to uh, be sprung up in areas that you would never think that they would need a food pantry in that That's right. higher income bracket. That's but right. it, it affects everyone Indeed. on, on uh, homeless and, and, and food. And I think you know that, that final element of every uh, service project, uh, compassion. Yes. also focuses young people outwards, not just towards their community or even to their state or even to their nation, but to other countries around the world that are facing similar issues uh, from their own perspective. Yeah. Uh, I just got back from the Philippines okay. where a group of Christian and Muslim youth are working to promote awareness of peace because in the southern Philippines uh, there's been a war there for a long, long time that has gotten uh, uh, not much uh, media, not much visibility, because it's kind of out of the way. Yeah, right. uh, but they want to work together so that they can become the next generation of leaders who will not go to war, who will not go to conflict. And uh, one of the activities we did was, uh, you just saw it on the screen there, was to create a giant peace dove puppet. Oh, giant peace. You know, it's excellent because uh, here in America, we, we live here in the United States, mm -hmm. and we have, we have a war going on. Mm -hmm. And we're spending trillions and trillions of dollars mm -hmm. for this war. Mm -hmm. Where if we had peace, we probably could spend maybe 10% of that mm -hmm. towards peace mm -hmm. and promoting what you're promoting on the roots and shoot for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. animals, humans, and the environment in regards. And, you, and this uh, brings on passion within us. Yeah, the yeah. compassion. The exactly. Compa yes. And I mean, you know. What Dr. Jane represents, and I think everyone who works uh, for Roots and Shoots throughout the country and throughout the world, is that the time is now, as Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King once said. Yes. The time is now. Young people need to be encouraged to take the lead and to make the world a better place. And to be quite honest, Roots and Shoots USA, Roots and Shoots Great Lakes, our other regions, don't tell the young people what they can do. They're the ones who come up with the ideas. We're yeah. simply here to say, all right, have you thought about trying this this way? Or what kind of support do you need? Or do you need some uh, greater visibility so you can get people to pay attention to what you're doing? You know, uh, um, uh, when you mentioned the environment, if, 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 if on a planet, <coughs> if we don't have uh, uh, the proper environment for mm -hmm. us to live on a planet, we won't be around. That's right. And, and I think the environment is a common cause for everyone to get together, regardless of their beliefs or their ethnic background, to try and protect the environment. Absolutely. And uh, again, um, Dr. Jane 
sees the environment in a much broader way than I think most people realize. I mean, typically when, when people hear that I'm working for Dr. Goodall, they say, <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, you're an environmentalist now. Uh, because I'm not. I, I did most of my work over the years in humanitarian assistance overseas. And what's very funny about that is that me as kind of a human-oriented person can yeah. get right on board with Roots and Shoots because her sense of the environment is a holistic one. The environment is a series of interconnected communities, yeah. communities of animals, communities of humans, and in the larger community, the biosphere, uh, the environment uh, as it's defined by water, by air, yeah. by land. Because we all need water, we all need air to breathe. And we all and need uh, decent soil uh, to build upon and to grow. Sure, and, and an animal needs water mm -hmm. and air also. You know, our body is what, 67% mm -hmm. uh, water? That's correct. Maybe, uh, and maybe uh, it is an animal's body is maybe uh, is the same percentage. That's right. And then, you know, in that sense, uh, I think uh, what Roots and Shoots is saying is that we share more in common with all these different communities than we have in terms of differences. Now, how is Roots and Shoots unique from other leadership in um, uh, and service organization? Well, I think first, uh, Roots and Shoots is unique in the fact that we have a very charismatic, very famous, and very uh, committed leader that is Dr. Jane Goodall. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. But what's important to realize is that while, while Dr. Jane gives us the, the right visibility and the attention, uh, you know, she's U.S. Messenger of Peace. Uh, she's been nominated uh, uh, for uh, numerous prizes around the world and received numerous prizes around the world. She believes that the best way to solve global solutions is locally, and the best people for coming up with those solutions are local people, and the very best people to lead <laughs> are young people. Yes. So that's the first thing that I think that makes us unique. Uh, the second is the fact that um, we do walk the talk about saying we are a youth directed organization. I think there are very few organizations out there that achieve it to the degree that we do. Our Great Lakes Youth Council will be organizing our youth summit uh, that's coming up in early October. Summit? Which we're going to have roots and shoots groups coming in from all over the region all to discuss. Region. Yeah, to discuss the. You know, work I, that I think done. Sherry has a little flyer on that, Sherry. Yeah. And maybe Sherry, if you could bring it up. And uh, so your conference is going to be uh, in October. That's correct. It's going to be at Northeastern Illinois University. Uh, you can see the dates uh, right up there. Um, if you want information about this uh, youth summit, you can go to our website, www.rootsandshoots. Dot org, all kind of one word yeah. like that. But the theme of that is going to be water, water, in fact. And it's going to be the broad issue of water and how it impacts uh, at the level of humans, at the, animal, at the level of animals, and obviously at the, the, the level of the environment. But that's just one example of how the youth are the ones that direct where we're going. Um, the final, well, the, the, the two final things that make us unique are that um, it's a very flexible program. It can be based in a school, it can be based in a church, synagogue, uh, mosque, it can be based with a homeschool group, it can be based with another club like the Girl Scouts. <coughs> Excuse me. A uh, good example, uh, we have two young uh, ladies, Girl Scouts, in the Ann Arbor, Michigan area, yeah. who noticed that the uh, oil being used to make Girl Scout cookies is palm oil. <laughs> one of the great problems with palm oil saturated fat. is, well, one is saturated fat, yeah. but there's incredible deforestation going on around oh. the world to create palm plantations. Yeah. And there are better alternatives. They have been working with the Girl Scouts National Office to change Girl Scout cookies oh, from excellent. palm oil <laughs> to another kind of oil. And again, this is the final thing that makes it unique. Mm. One person, two people, three people, yeah. young people make an incredible difference well beyond what you might expect them to do. We just have to give them control and in some sense get out of their way. 
Uh, you, Let them go. You know, my, my daughter um, was in the Girl Scouts, mm -hmm. and she received her Golden Award. Oh, fantastic. That's, uh, that's on the equivalent to the Boy Scouts where they get their Eagle. Eagle Scout, that's uh, right. My two, my two boys, uh, Frankie and Quinn, received their Eagle Award also. In Boy I was Scouts. an Eagle Scout as well. Yeah, yeah. In fact, my early, uh, my early career after college uh, and before graduate school was as a district executive with the Boy Scouts oh. in the community up in upstate New York where oh. I grew up. <laughs> and in many ways, setting up this regional office, because yeah. it's the first time we've had one, yeah. I've been uh, borrowing many of the great lessons <laughs> from my Boy Scout years, uh, repackaging it a little yeah. bit. But, you know, there's, there's no reason to keep reinventing the wheel. That's right. You know, you mentioned about your conference. It's going to be the water conference. Mm -hmm. And a water so precious. Uh, of all the water in the world, mm -hmm. all the water, 1% is surface water. Mm -hmm. uh, that you can use for drinking purposes. And the Great Lakes Basin yeah, 1%. Is, is the largest collection of clean, fresh water yeah, in it, the world. 18% uh, of that 1% is right here yeah. in, in the Great Lakes. 18%. Yeah, the biggest uh, all, source. All, all 1% is right here. Right. And 90% and of all the surface water in the United States mm -hmm. is right here. That's right. And, and so that's why I said that this is God's country. That's right. That uh, 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 people that are living here around the Great Lakes are very fortunate because we do have fresh water. That's right. And, you know, they, uh, the, let's see, the six governors uh, of the states and also, I believe, another Canada. two provinces, yes. uh, premiers, uh, signed the Great Lakes Compact. Which okay. is, it finally got signed now? Yeah, it got signed uh, mid-summer. It's going to uh, regulate the uh, what goes into the lakes, how much water comes, comes out. out. Yes. Uh, and if you think about it in terms of the uniqueness of two countries getting together to share responsibility for keeping one resource yes. going, it's a pretty amazing thing. And I would say that you know not only Roots and Shoots groups, but Boy Scout groups, uh, Girl Scout groups, any environmental group that's been working hard, you know, almost unseen, uh, this is one of the great successes because the governors and the premiers and the politicians of our respective countries wouldn't know that this was an important thing unless people, especially young people, yes. gave the issue voice. And this is exactly what we at the Jane Goodall Institute want to promote, want to encourage, want to strengthen, is giving young people a voice, giving young people uh, an opportunity to make the world a better place. Now, uh, Roots and Shoot, um, <coughs> we, we talk nationally, we talk regional. Mm -hmm. Is it a regional or is it a national organization? Roots well, and Roots and Shoots... Or both. Is well, it's actually three things. Roots and Shoots, is a, as I said before, is a global network. Mm -hmm. uh, there are Jane Goodall institutes in a number of countries, both in the uh, developing world and in the West. And almost all of these national Jane Goodall institutes have their own national Roots and Shoots. So here, our home office is in Arlington, Virginia, is kind of the, uh, uh, the, the, the capo di capi of Jane Goodall Institutes. It's, yeah. the, it's the number one. And in Arlington, that's where the headquarters for Roots and Shoots USA is. Then we have five regions, Roots and Shoots Great Lakes, uh, Roots and Shoots New England, Roots and Shoots California, since it's such a big state, yes. And then uh, Roots and Shoots Four Corners, which are the two, which are the four big square states out in uh, the Southwest uh, that all come together. Yeah, yeah. Arizona, uh, Arizona Nevada. Colorado, Nevada, yeah. and the Utah. Utah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we have a very special project in the Northern Great Plains, uh, which is a Roots and Shoots office that works particularly closely with Native American communities, mm. uh, both on and off the reservations in that area. Now, uh, uh, Roots and Shoots, uh, what, what uh, are your future plans for Roots and Shoots? Well, um, I, I, I know that you're trying to save the planet. <coughs> so and, and it looks like you're growing, and it looks like that uh, I think we can rest assured that our kids are, are going to save the planet, and, and Roots and Shoots is going to provide the education Right. Uh, uh, for them to save uh, the earth. Right. Well, think of it this way. Almost here in the Chicago area, for example, we have a lot of uh, environmental groups that have youth wings or youth programs that are a means to a particular mission. 
whether it's cleaning up the Chicago River, working uh, with uh, re, uh, reintroducing native plants. The thing to always remember about Roots and Shoots is that the youth are our mission. And so any kind of plan we take for the future is not so much about saving the world, but how to encourage the young people, how to develop their skills, their skills. so that they'll save the world. Yeah. And to that end... And, and that's important. Yeah, I think how, it is. How do we educate mm -hmm. and who's going to educate them properly? And then, give the them, key, yeah. right, and then give them the tools where they can do it themselves. Yes, yes, because yes. unfortunately for both of us, uh, we're not going to be around forever. <laughs> and, uh, you well, know, they, I'm, I'm, I'm eating good. Oh, well. so, so am I. So am I. <laughs> Except for this little cold I brought yeah. back from the Philippines. I'm feeling pretty good yeah. myself. But in any case, so, so our plans are this. And, and they're mostly, as the regional director, um, <coughs> I focus more on kind of the structure of getting things done as opposed to the exciting programs yes. and whatnot. Uh, it kind of changes your perspective when you become the, the boss in an organization. Um, what I would love to see is to have a volunteer state coordinator in every state of the Great Lakes. I would love, uh, we are planning uh, to have a youth council in every state. Yeah, excellent. The idea being is to carry on this idea that we create a structure at the regional level that promotes the greatest amount of local initiatives. And that means providing a volunteer infrastructure that can help recruit uh, Roots and Shoots groups, can help train the leaders, can help develop the program and finally can provide the resources, both material and human, to keep those groups going throughout the years. And, you know, and, and, and if there's anyone out there that could assist Ruth and Shoot uh, Regional, uh, uh, Great Lakes Regional mm -hmm. uh, group here, I think they, they should give you a call, look on your website or email you. Absolutely. And, and because you are looking for help. Absolutely. Right? I mean, uh, uh, one person cannot do it all. No, no. Uh, and you'll see right there is uh, my information is up. We're particularly interested in the Indiana area. In, in the Indiana area? Indiana. We're looking for someone who, as I said, uh, would be able to volunteer for us. We're hoping in the next uh, cycle of, of grant submissions yes. to create a part-time paraprofessional job yes, yes. Uh, so we can take our our wonderful volunteers and actually at least be able to uh, give them some uh, you know small amount of money for their efforts but in Indiana we're looking for someone who knows how to recruit groups uh, how to train leaders how to work with uh, youth to develop programming and how to figure out where the best resources are to keep those groups going now Gard, how did you become the regional director of uh, Roots and Shoot Great Lakes. Um. It's, it's a, uh, <laughs> it, 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 can, it can be a long story, but I'll, I'll story? keep it short. Yeah. Um, I used to be a university professor okay. uh, for almost 12 years. 12 years. Uh, thought that was what I was going to do, settled down, I had tenure. Um, but I started doing projects overseas and really enjoyed that kind of field work. Uh, I kind of cut my teeth uh, on humanitarian assistance uh, in Israel, Palestine, then in Bosnia during the war and after, Ukraine, uh, parts of Central Asia, uh, Tajikistan, which is on the Afghan border, and came to Chicago uh, to work with a friend, thinking I'd be here for a couple years. Yeah. Uh, this was 10 years ago, and would uh, then move on, go overseas, become an expat. Yeah. I fell in love with Chicago. Okay. And in a sense, I've kind of chosen Chicago as the place I want to give back to from all this wonderful experience I've had. Uh, a couple years ago, as you know, there was that uh, incredibly destructive hurricane Katrina that hit yes. New Orleans. Yes. I have an uh, aunt, uncle, and two cousins down there. Oh. Uh, completely lost their house. And I went down uh, for a couple of months to work in cleaning up the house. And like any do-gooder, uh, couldn't keep my nose on other people's business. I got involved with some other programs down there and started hearing about Roots and Shoots. Yes. And about Dr. Jane Goodall. Was well, Roots Shoots working down there? Were the they kids were working indeed. down there? They were indeed. <coughs> when I came back, uh, I found out that they actually had uh, gotten a very, very generous grant uh, from the Reagan-Stein 
Foundation, uh, a foundation that uh, has supported in wonderful ways uh, the Chicago Botanic Gardens as well as the uh, Lincoln Park Zoo. Uh, and they want to now support the, the establishment of an office here mm. in the Midwest. And uh, I applied, and uh, they gave it to me. They gave it to you? They gave me the job. Now, at that time, there weren't any Rosenschild groups here in the Chicago area. Oh, on the contrary. I mean, this is the amazing thing. One of the reasons why we're creating these regional offices, yes. and the regional offices are not that old. Uh, mine is the newest, but uh, most of them only go back a couple of years. Uh, the program at Star was started in 1991. When 1991? Doc, yeah, Dr. Jane oh, travels. Over, uh, eight, over uh, 15 years, years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Jane travels 300 days a year Three. talking about the environment. Uh, talking about chimpanzee yeah. uh, research and pre preservation, but mostly she talks about roots and shoots. I really see that as her great legacy, and she knows it's her legacy. And so we already had about 300 groups here in the region. 300? Mm -hmm. Before, before we ever had an office. Yeah. Many people will say that to me. They say, well, you know, did you start the groups yourself? No, in, in effect, the, the, most of the groups are doing just fine. The big, the big first challenge was for us to say, hey, we're here to help. Yes. And to convince them that that was a good thing. Uh, because, you know, most of these groups have been operating, you know, very autonomously, doing wonderful things. But every now and then they needed help. They'd have to call all the way to Arlington, Virginia. Well, now they can get in touch with us here in Chicago. And it's been amazing. Uh, after the initial kind of question of, well, why should we care, they're now seeing that all the great ideas that are coming from our youth council, that are coming from our professional staff, uh, that we really are an asset to making their programs both uh, successful and sustainable. And, and originally you were uh, born and raised in New York? Upstate New York. Upstate uh, New York. The Adirondack Mountains where uh, Vermont, New York, and Canada come together. Oh, nice. I grew up in, a, uh, in an official village of about 2,000 people. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, it's a beautiful country. Uh, I used to guide uh, uh, in the summer times yeah. for uh, tourists and whatnot. And as I said, unfortunately, uh, while it's a beautiful place to live, it's a very uh, poor place. Economically. Economically. The, the economy hasn't been well for about 100 years since the end of logging. And uh, so I did my graduate work at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. That kind of narrows your, your focus. So I've been in the Midwest ever since. So now you've been the regional director for a few years. Now. Two years. It's two coming years. up in two years, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, two years this uh, December. Two years. And uh, what in the two years, what difference have you seen here in the Chicago land or even in the Great Lakes area in, in terms of what type of help uh, we all need? Well, I think, uh, again, and it's important to remember that youth is our mission okay. and so the greatest change that I've seen is that when I first started talking in this way to other groups particularly environmental groups but also youth uh, oriented programs or uh, uh, animal oriented programs <coughs> excuse me they didn't quite get it yeah you have a youth program but what are they gonna do and I would say well I don't know we'll have to go ask them and they'd be <laughs> like uh, how can you do that? Yeah. And people are well, starting. It's different. It's, it's different. different. Yeah. But people are starting to get it, and I think it's actually having an impact on the way people are now running other organizations. And again, I can't take credit for that. I'm merely carrying the water, as it were, uh, for Dr. Jane and and for all the wonderful people who've been working in Roots and Shoots for longer than I knew it ever even existed. Well, you know, I, I think we have to come up with something different mm -hmm. because we've been operating, and maybe the environmental groups and all of us have been operating on the same status quo. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't worked. Right. And, and, and maybe we should uh, have been stagnant. Mm -hmm. And maybe we should do th things differently. If it hasn't worked for the last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, well, you know, and it stays static, mm -hmm. then it's not working. Well, you know, I mean, in general, People are talking about the graying of the nonprofit world, of the community service world. You know, that great generation uh, that Tom Brokaw loves to write about, you know, the 68 generation. Yeah. Uh, great generation. Uh, without them, we wouldn't have the kinds of organizations helping communities that we, <coughs> excuse me, that we do today. Unfortunately, folks are re reaching retirement age. And I think people are beginning to notice and ask the simple question, where are the youth? 
and I think Dr. Jane, who represents that kind of 68 generation, uh, I, I, I would say she started asking that question a bit earlier than a lot of people And did. I think it, it's a correct question to ask because mm -hmm. if it has been working, mm -hmm. we have to look towards the kids to help us solve the problem. That's right. And, and now uh, for, uh, for the new school year, uh, mm -hmm. what events are you launching now for the new school year? Well, I already told you about uh, the first weekend of the <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I've already t told you about the, the, the Youth Summit. Okay, uh, which is uh, the Water Conference. The Water Conference, right, which is the first weekend yeah. in, uh, in October. Uh, another uh, initiative that we're using to kind of kick off the school year and to attract new Roots and Shoots groups to organize is uh, September 21st, uh, which is every year uh, the UN International Day of Peace. And Dr. Jane is a messenger of peace for the UN, and she has great, great plans this year, uh, and therefore we do too, to see as many young people out in the streets, out in the common spaces, out in front of their uh, municipal government buildings, raising awareness for peace. Yes. And the way we'd like them to do it is to create these giant peace dove puppets. <laughs> uh, I think uh, your assistant in the booth has a picture of me from the Philippines. Okay. Uh, if she could bring that up. Uh, yeah, there it is. And that is a peace dove. Now, that was made in Mindanao a few weeks ago. Mindanao is not a very wealthy area. Uh, all those materials were purchased in the marketplace, not in a supermarket, but in a real marketplace yeah. that you, we probably remember from old-time Chicago, where you had the vendors along yeah. Maxwell Street. Yeah. Very similar thing. And that uh, making that puppet here in the United States won't cost you more than $20, $30. Now, again, a lot of people have been asking us, why the giant peace dove? We believe the giant peace dove, representing obviously the dove of peace, is a great way to get people talking about issues in their community that deal with peace and deal with violence. And we're particularly interested on the weekend of the 21st uh, to support the Build the Peace Committee which is bringing together a number of organizations with the support of the mayor's office, with Arnie Duncan, uh, the head of our uh, Chicago Public Schools, to <laughs> promote anti-violence, to promote, promote non-violence, especially for things that have been happening here in the Chicago yes. area yeah. over the last year, year and a half. And so there will be a big set of events on Friday at Daly Plaza. That will be the 19th. Uh, at noon, there will be young people from a Northside High School raising the flags of all the countries of the world in a show of solidarity. All the countries of the world? All the countries. There will be 200 high school students there doing oh. this. And we will have a number of our peace doves there as well. And then the following day at the University of Illinois uh, here in Chicago, we are going to be having from about noon until 5 in the afternoon a series of workshops on how to promote peace. Mm. And then at that, we're going to be doing workshops on uh, how to build peace doves. And then on the 21st, uh, for Roots and Shoots all over the region, we have probably a dozen to two dozen groups that are going to be giving peace a lift, raising their peace doves uh, at various uh, peace day uh, celebrations. I, I think that's excellent because... <laughs> uh, in the last couple of weeks in the paper, yeah. you've been reading uh, um, about what's going on throughout the world. Mm -hmm. And and when that occurs, you have a lot of innocent people uh, uh, suffering, mm -hmm. not because of their own doing, mm -hmm. but because of uh, very few people up there mm -hmm. on the top mm -hmm. that, that are looking for power or mm -hmm. I don't even know what they're looking for, mm -hmm. but it affects everyone down below. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Violence is easy. You know, yeah. violence is e easy. In fact, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you may have noticed that there really isn't any uh, antonym, you know, any opposite word uh, to violence. We can only talk about non-violence, non-hyphen yeah. violence. It's not like we have a concept even of non-violence. Uh, peace is kind of something else. You know, it's an endpoint, whereas violence is a is a process towards something. So 
it's very hard, I think, for most people to imagine the opposite of violence, the opposite of conflict, the opposite of war. Um, and we have to take a look at the examples of people around the world who have done quite well doing that, who have been able to do the difficult work. Everything from Mahatma Gandhi, uh, as I said before, to uh, uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, um, Václav Havel, um, you know, people around the world who are committed to doing the hard work. And that's why Dr. Jane Goodall is committed also. Absolutely. Peace. As the UN uh, Messenger of Peace, yes. uh, along with uh, 11 other uh, very famous and, and well-known people, uh, she has taken the commitment to doing the hard work. Yeah. But again, it's not just up to us, it's up to the young people. Yeah. You know, uh, um, lately I've been watching the Summer Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy watching the Summer Olympics and watching the young mm -hmm. kids throughout the world competing mm -hmm. against each other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so this is how we should be also. Absolutely. Uh, 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 <coughs> having the kids uh, 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 throughout the world trained to help each other. Because mm -hmm. as I mentioned before, our neighbor is the whole world now. That's right. That's right. I think it was there was uh, one event, I can't recall which event it was, but there was the event that where they had a, a young woman athlete from Georgia uh, in the Caucasus and a young woman athlete from Russia. Yes. And, you know, as we know, the last couple of weeks, uh, there's been a pretty vicious uh, conflict over property rights yes. between these two countries. And the Russian athlete made a point after the end of the event to come over and hug and give support to the Georgian athlete. Mm -hmm. And most people might say, gosh, that's a bit of a cliche. Or they might say, oh, why are you just doing these peace doves? What, what difference is that going to make? It's a first step. The first, yes. And in being a first step, it definitely makes a difference. And it shows compassion. Oh, sure. Mentioned. Yeah, compassion. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Jane Goodall, commitment to the Great Lakes. What did she see in the Great Lakes, and, and why is she making her a big commitment here? Well, I think first of all, uh, she is a she is a British citizen, British subject. Uh, she is from England originally, but she's traveled all over the country. Yeah. And I think, uh, and I've talked with her a number of times. Uh, she was here, uh, as you knew, a, a few months back in March. And I think uh, the one, the, probably the greatest thing that attracts Dr. Jane about the Midwest, about the Great Lakes region, is it's such a wonderful symbol of the interconnection between the environment of the Great Lakes and the animals and the human beings that take up residence here, that are you know part of that great sure. environment. I think she also appreciates, she comes from a small town uh, in England called Bournemouth, and uh, I think she appreciates, even in a big city like Chicago, uh, the kind of, you know, and it's kind of a cliche, but it's true, the kind of down-home hospitality, uh, roll up your sleeves. Well, we have the best the hot dogs. And we do have the best uh, hot dogs. Pizzas, yeah. Pizzas. Well, she is a, she is a <laughs> bit of a vegetarian. Yeah, vegan. Yeah. Uh, but, but she's <laughs> well, not. Well, we have vegans here also. <coughs> yeah, Absolutely. A lot, of vegan, a lot of good vegan restaurants. Absolutely. And we had, actually, when she was here uh, at uh, Blackstone Bikes, uh, the bike cooperative down yeah. uh, on 61st. Uh, and Blackstone, uh, we had a wonderful uh, vegan caterer come in that oh. she really, really liked. And uh, she can be kind of particular about her food simply well, you because know, she's traveling all the time. Well, here, here in the Midwest, uh, as I mentioned, we have the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. We have uh, good black dirt. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have uh, our, uh, uh, this is God's country with the mm -hmm. farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, we have corn, soybean. Mm -hmm. We have a vibrant urban lifestyle as right. well. We have I-80, where all the 18-wheelers transporting their products and goods from New York always. That's right. We are a transport hub. Transport hub. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have everything here mm -hmm. in the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. And and I think the, uh, this is the next location to have your regional be located here in the Chicagoland area. I agree with you. Yeah. I agree. And, and also we have problems that, that we need roots and shoot to help us. Here also, and and I but with think every but with every every uh, problem, every challenge, there's always an opportunity, especially with the quality of young folks that we're working with. I'm yeah. incredibly impressed yes. by that. And and the rhythm shooting up. Let's go over the different kind of organizations or institutions you're working with mm -hmm. now here in the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, could, could you name some more? 
Well, uh, we uh, a group was started uh, back uh, in September of '07. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, by a math and science teacher at the Richard J. Daly Academy. Um, we have, as I said again, uh, another group that is associated with the Toledo Zoo. Yes. Toledo Zoo. Okay. Uh, we have the groups in Ann Arbor that are part of a Girl Scout troop. Typically what we'd like to do is to work with already established youth programs that might want to enhance what they're currently doing and be able to link into this wonderful regional, national, and international network. Re regional, national, and international, and international. I think that's really kind of the, uh, the, the greatest aspect of, of what we have to author to other groups. We'll also work with family groups. We have a number of those in the Upper Peninsula. Uh, we actually have some private zoos and private animal collections that use our program as their youth outreach. Uh, as I said before, we're working uh, as an after-school program with homeless yeah. youth in the Ohio area. So if you really, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> If you are really excited about what it sounds, uh, by, by what I'm saying and, and what we're doing, um, please, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, send us an email. And uh, we have Crudell Walls here in Illinois, who is our uh, professional state uh, coordinator, and he'll be more than happy uh, to sit down with you and discuss the ways that uh, you can start a group. Now, you, uh, you mentioned that you're the regional director mm -hmm. of the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, your regional office is here in Chicago. Yep, 70 East Lake. 70 East Lake. But it looks like not only do you do local mm -hmm. projects, it looks like you do overseas projects. Absolutely. Also. I mean, from your office here. Absolutely. Um, one of the things, uh, and this is another aspect of, uh, of Chicago especially, but the Midwest, uh, that, that Dr. Jane is really attracted to, is the fact that we are an international region. Yes. You know, Chicago is built on the shoulders of immigrants. immigrants. Uh, and while the immigrant faces might change, the fact that we're an immigrant country, an immigrant region, hasn't. And I don't think it ever will. And so we're doing work supporting peace groups in the Philippines. Why? Because it's good to do. There's a historic relationship between the Philippines uh, and us. Uh, the United States, um, the picture that just was up, uh, we've done work uh, in Nigeria and Africa, in fact all over Africa, uh, because that's where Jane uh, has done a lot of her chimpanzee research. Um, the idea is that, as you said, our neighbor is no longer the person next door mm -hmm. only, it's the entire world. But what's also important about doing that work overseas, <coughs> as an organization, and as me thinking as a you know as the regional director, is that when I work with communities here in the Chicago area that might be Filipino American, or might be uh, African American or, uh, groups um, or immigrants from Nigeria, let's say, or Tanzania or Mozambique, um, we can say, look, we've got the creds. We actually understand the kind of things that you might need, and how to and how to help you with that because we've had experience with your home countries. And perhaps you want to help us do that work over there as well. So it's a wonderful way to kind of build even more bridges to this kind of international city of ours, Chicago. Yeah, that's true because we do have, uh, you know, you could find almost every ethnic restaurant here in Chicago. <laughs> and every ethnic group. I mean, yeah, most, yeah. most people don't realize that the, the Filipino-American uh, communities in the Midwest alone are the second largest Asian immigrant community. Second largest? In the Midwest. Mm. Uh, you know, when you go to the Philippines, especially in Manila, um, you see a place that has a wonderful, though complicated, but very close relationship with the United States. And I'm always surprised by people in the Midwest who are sometimes a, a bit puzzled uh, not only by this relationship with the Philippines, but also uh, quite where it's located. And it's funny because, on the other hand, every Filipino, every Filipina knows where America is and <laughs> knows everything about us, yeah. you know? Now, if, if there's someone out there that's watching this show, mm -hmm. wants to start a rut and shoot, uh, 
group. Roots and Shoots Group. Roots and Shoot Group. Mm -hmm. How do, do they get started? Well, what they can do is is to give our uh, office a call, 312-345-1123, uh, or they can email me, G. Katner, all one word, at Jane Goodall, all, all one word, dot org. And it's probably on the screen. Sherry, it is on the screen Sherry right does now. a good job. She <laughs> does indeed. She does indeed. I'm trying to read backwards yeah. there as I'm looking at it. <coughs> um, what you need, you need to find a committed adult. Okay. Uh, maybe there's a, a new teacher at your school. Sure. Uh, maybe uh, there's a community leader in your neighborhood. Uh, perhaps uh, there's a parent. And then you've got to recruit, and you can recruit as few as four or five young people. And then get in touch with us, and we'll get you scheduled to be trained as a leader. We're talking to the adults. And once we train the adult leader, uh, we'll give them activities that they can do starting out. And again, we're not asking you to change the world in the first project. We want you to. Well, it'd be nice. It'd be nice yeah. if you could do it. Now. Yeah, it's but <laughs> reality is, you know, you think big. It takes small steps. Yes. And we've gotten very good at providing the kind of steps you need to take. To and, fill and, that and, and what would make a good roots and shoot leader? I think a good roots and shoots leader is someone first who uh, strongly believes in letting the youth do the work, in letting the youth um, come up with the ideas. Certainly, they shouldn't just sit back and let anything happen. But they've got to be able to balance both giving the young people as much autonomy as possible with giving them a little push or a little spin every now and then to get them back on track. Uh, someone who's worked with young people as a professional, uh, someone who has both patience and enthusiasm and can maintain both over a long time. That makes a good leader. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm, I'm reading, uh, I downloaded some mm. information on the web. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says, what is the Roots and Shoot mission? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like your mission. Thank you. And, and I'm going to read it. It says, to foster respect and compassion for all living things. And that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Have compassion. That's right. Because if we have compassion, we're going to like each other. Exactly. Yeah. And also to promote understanding of all culture mm -hmm. and beliefs. Because mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned, uh, our neighbor is a whole world. That's right. And, and, and we have to learn how to get along mm -hmm. with, with each other. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, your third thing is to inspire mm -hmm. each individual to take action to make the world a better place for people, animal, and the environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an excellent uh, mission. Who thought of this mission? The kids? Uh, <laughs> since I'm new to Roots and Shoots, yes. uh, I've only been in it for uh, going on two years now, um, I can make some educated guesses. Uh, we have a national youth council uh, that supports our national office in Arlington, Virginia. We also have a university program that does the same. And a lot of kind of the first years of organizing Roots and Shoots came out of those three bodies. So while I don't know exact, I can, like I said, take a pretty good educated guess that it was young people that came up with that. And, and you know, uh, by being a, a regional national and international, uh, a person that's with a, 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 a local group could become with a regional or a national. And then if he wants to learn more about international, there's groups that he could join or, or even write uh, pen pals. Absolutely. And even learn and, and help each other. Right. We have a program. Uh, if you go to, uh, again, rootsandshoots.org, uh, and it's not our particular website for the region. We're still getting ready to launch yeah, that. Okay. Uh, all the regions are going to launch it soon enough. Uh, but that'll be our na that's our national website. Okay. And what you want to do is look for the Partnership and Understanding. Partnership and Understanding? <coughs> that's correct. Partnership and Understanding is basically a pen pal program between Roots and Shoots groups here in the United States and those elsewhere. And, and, and this, uh, have, have you ever had any groups here in your Chicagoland area take a trip during the summertime internationally? Uh, one just got back. One uh, got back? They come from the northern suburbs. They just came back from Tanzania. Tanzania? Where they visited Gombe, where okay. uh, Dr. Jane Goodall uh, has done all her wonderful research okay. with the chimpanzees there. Uh, this group is really quite fantastic. It uh, uh, consists of about... 
uh, 40 to 50 young people. Oh, a good size group. It's a great size group. And they actually have raised money for various chimp-related causes in the Gombe Wildlife Preserve. Everything from planting trees uh, to uh, providing uh, communities with alternatives to chopping down the forest and what have you. And uh, their leader, uh, I believe, took about 25 young people, high school students, mm. to Tanzania. Also, one of the members of our own youth council uh, went to Tanzania as part of a different group of national youth leaders to go to Gombe as well and uh, she's 21 so she decided she wanted to go to Zanzibar afterwards mm -hmm. and just got an email from her this morning she finally mm -hmm. came home oh. so uh, she'll be uh, her name is uh, Myra Myra is going to be sharing her experiences uh, with a lot of people both at Peace Day and at the uh, Water Conference Youth Summit well that's excellent because even if you're here locally you could go regionally mm -hmm. also or, or as you mentioned uh, uh, you went down to Katrina mm -hmm. in, down in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if you had any groups uh, when the Mississippi flood up in Iowa. That's uh, right. A lot of groups went up to, I mean, a lot of other organizations went up to Iowa. So I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, you know, that's uh, unfortunately our regions, the five regions we have, don't cover every state. Every now and then we deal with some groups that are like on the edges. So, so for us, one of the edge areas would be Iowa. Uh, we didn't hear about it, but that doesn't mean it didn't happen. And I'd be yeah. surprised if it, if it didn't happen. Now, on, on the uh, uh, youth, and, and your mission mm -hmm. is for educating and hel helping the youth mm -hmm. to solve their own problems. And, and, so, uh, and, and it appears that uh, the program has been in existence since 1991. That's correct. This is 2008, mm -hmm. and the growth of Roots and Shoot mm -hmm. has been excellent. It's been incredible. So, so it looks like this idea mm -hmm. of how to uh, keep an organization going mm -hmm is an excellent uh, uh, type of uh, new approach than the old approach. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, you know, in a sense, and not to be too flip about it, it, it <laughs> it's an idea that seems to have taken root. Yeah, and, right, right. Uh, but, yes, and yes. is bearing fruit. So, it is bearing, uh, bearing. yeah, we've been very, very fortunate. Now, uh, I, I'm the age, as you mentioned, there's no age <coughs> minimum limit mm -hmm. in the youth group. Is there any age limit on the upper end? Actually, no. No, because, you know, uh, even if a person is 70 years old, he's still a youth. He still, uh, Absolutely. He still has a youth. Uh, you know, typically, typically most groups start around uh, the first grade. So first you know, grade? Six and seven, yeah. Um, we have materials and we have had groups in the past, but typically, you know, uh, five, six, seven is kind of the starting off. And uh, you're absolutely right. There are a couple groups on both coasts, not in our region, but on both coasts, that are adult groups. Yeah. Uh, and, and, they, and they're they, young at heart. And they're, they are young at they're heart. They're young at heart. So. They are young at heart. I mean, uh, when you see Dr. Jane, if you ever see her on TV or hear her or see some of uh, our own webcasts on the, uh, on the Internet, remember that she just turned 74. Now, now uh, in a brief couple of statements, uh, explain about Jane Goodall. Okay. Uh, Dr. Goodall uh, went to Africa in 1960, uh, met uh, the world uh, famous anthropologist Leakey there. He was trying to figure out how you could study the behavior of our most ancient ancestors, but with only bones and fossils, you couldn't get so far. Yeah came up with the idea that maybe we should be watching the, our closest cousins in the evolutionary uh, path, which in that case were the uh, chimpanzees. Well, I have a lot of cousins there. Yeah. I have a lot of, a lot of relatives there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, uh, she went to observe the chimps, and she discovered two things that revolutionized not only the definition of a chimpanzee, but the definition of a human being. She noticed that the chimpanzees uh, were intelligent, and she noticed that the uh, chimpanzees could use tools, something that we thought uh, were limited to human beings. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Gard. Uh, thank you, Frank. Uh, talking about roots and shoot. And I think every youth out there uh, should maybe partic participate some way in your organization. We'd love to have you. Because we have to depend on you to, uh, to solve our earth and our problems. That's correct. Thank you. Living creatures, I will be.